U.S. wars cost at least $3.7 trillion since 9 when President Barack Obama cited cost as the reason to bring troops home from Afghanistan. He referred to a $1 trillion price tag for America's wars. Staggering as it is, that figure grossly underestimates the total cost of wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan to the United States Treasury and ignores more imposing costs yet to come. According to a study, the final bill will reach at least $3.7 trillion and could be as high as $4.4 trillion. According to the research project Costs of War by Brown University's Watson Institute for International Studies, in the 10 years since U.S. troops went into Afghanistan to root out the Al-Qaeda leaders behind the September 11, 2001 attacks, spending on the conflicts have totaled two. Point three trillion dollars to two point seven trillion dollars. Those numbers will continue to soar when considering often overlooked costs such as long term obligations to wounded veterans and projected war spending from two thousand twelve through twenty twenty. The estimates do not include at least one trillion dollars more in interest payments coming due and many billions more in expenses that cannot be counted according to the study. In other words, the true cost of the war could be more than $4.4 trillion. And this figure is eerily close to what President Obama and the Congress is trying to cut from the United States budget or the deficit. In human terms, 224,000 to 258,000 people have died directly from warfare, including 125,000 civilians in Iraq. Many more have died indirectly from the loss of clean drinking water, health care, and nutrition. An additional 365,000 people have been wounded, and 7.8 million people, equal to the combined population of Connecticut and Kentucky, have been displaced. Costs of war brought together more than 20 academics to uncover the expense of war in lives and dollars, a daunting task given the inconsistent recording of lives lost and what the report called opaque and sloppy accounting by the U.S. Congress and the Pentagon. Again, in other words, the true costs of the wars could be much higher. The report underlines the extent to which war will continue to stretch the U.S. federal budget, which is already on an unsustainable course due to an aging American population and skyrocketing health care costs. It also raises the question of what the United States gained from its multi-trillion dollar investment. I hope that when we look back, whenever this ends, something very good has come out of it. Senator Bob Corker, a Republican from Tennessee, said, in one sense, the report measures the cost of 9-1-1, the American shorthand for the events of September 11, 2001. Nineteen hijackers plus other Al-Qaeda plotters spent an estimated 400,000 to 500,000 on the plane attacks that killed 2,995 people and caused at least $50 billion to $100 billion in economic damages. What followed were three wars in which 50 billion amounts to a rounding error. For every person killed on September 11th, another 73 have been killed since. More war than ever before. So, was it worth it? That is a question many people want answered, said Catherine Lutz, head of the anthropology department at Brown and co-director of the study. We decided we needed to do this kind of rigorous assessment of what it cost to make those choices to go to war, she said. Politicians, we assumed, were not going to do that kind of assessment. The report arrives as Congress debates how to cut a U.S. deficit projected at $1.4 trillion this year, roughly a tenth of which can be attributed to direct war spending. 
What did the United States gain for all its trillions? Strategically, the results for the United States are mixed. Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein are dead. But Iraq and Afghanistan are far from stable democracies. The Taliban, though ousted from government, remain a viable military force in Afghanistan. So far, the United States has been extremely successful in protecting the homeland, said George Friedman, founder of Stratfor, a U.S.-based intelligence company. Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan was capable of mounting very sophisticated, complex operations on an intercontinental basis. That organization with that capability has not only been substantially reduced, it seems to have been shattered, at least so they say. Economically, the results are also mixed. War spending may be adding half a percentage point a year to growth and the gross domestic product, but that has been more than offset by the negative effects of deficit spending. The report concludes. Some U.S. government reports have attempted to assess the costs of war. Notably, a March 2011 Congressional Research Service report that estimated post-September 11th war funding at $1.4 trillion through 2012. The Congressional Budget Office projected war costs through 2021 at $1.8 trillion. A groundbreaking private estimate was published in the 2008 book The Three Trillion Dollar War. That work revealed how much cost was added by interest on deficit spending and medical care for veterans. The report draws on those sources and pieces together many others for a more comprehensive picture. The report also makes special note of Pakistan, a front not generally mentioned along with Iraq and Afghanistan. War has probably killed more people in Pakistan than in neighboring Afghanistan, the report concludes. Politicians throughout history have underestimated the costs of war, believing they will be shorter and less deadly than reality, said Netta Crawford, the other co-director of the report and a political science professor at Boston University. The report also said former President George W. B. USH's administration was shamelessly politically driven and underestimating Iraq war costs before the 2003 invasion. Most official sources continue to overlook costs largely because of a focus on just Pentagon spending, Crawford said. Specific war spending over the past 10 years when expressed in 2011 dollars comes to 1.3 trillion dollars the cost of war project found. When it comes to accounting for every dollar that 1.3 trillion dollars is merely a good start. Since the wars have been financed by deficit spending, interest must be paid $185 billion of accumulated so far. The Pentagon has received an, an additional $326 billion to $652 billion beyond what can be attributed to the war appropriations the study found. Homeland Security spending has totaled another $401 billion so far that can be traced to September 11th. War-related foreign aid, another $74 billion. Then comes caring for U.S. veterans of war. Nearly half of the 1.25 million who have served in uniform in Iraq and Afghanistan have used their status as veterans to make health or disability claims at an expense of $32.6 billion to date. Those costs will soar over the next 40 years as veterans age. The report estimates the U.S. obligations to the veterans will reach at least $589 billion to $934 billion through 2050. So far, those numbers add up to a low estimate of $2.9 trillion and a moderate estimate of $3.6 trillion in costs to the U.S. Treasury. No high estimate was offered. We feel a conservative measure of costs is plenty large to attract attention, said report contributor Ryan Edwards. 
and economist who studied the war impact on deficit spending. Those numbers leave out hundreds of billions in social costs not borne by the U.S. taxpayer but by veterans and their families. Another $295 billion to $400 billion, increasing the range of costs to date to some $3.2 trillion to approximately $4 trillion. That's a running total through fiscal 2011. Add another $453 billion in war-related spending projected for 2012 to 2020, and the total grows to $3.668 trillion to $4.444 trillion. If the financial costs are elusive, so too is the human toll. The report estimates between 224,475 and 257,655 have been killed in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, though those numbers give a false sense of precision. There are many sources of data on civilian deaths, most with different results. The civilian death toll in Iraq, 125,000, and the number of Saddam's security forces killed in invasion, 10,000, are loose estimates. The U.S. military does not publish a thorough accounting. We don't do body counts. Tommy Franks, the U.S. commander in Iraq, famously said after the fall of Saddam in 2003. In Afghanistan, the civilian death count ranges from at least 11,700 to 13,900. For Pakistan, where there is little access to the battlefield, and the United States fights mostly through aerial drone attacks, the study found it impossible to distinguish between civilian and insurgent deaths. The numbers only consider direct deaths, people killed by bombs or bullets. Estimates for indirect deaths in war vary so much that researchers consider them too arbitrary to report. When the fighting stops, the indirect dying continues. It's in fact worse than landmines. The health care system is still in bad shape. People are still suffering the effects of malnutrition and so on, Crawford said. So, in conclusion, the costs of these wars are enormous and is affecting the U.S. economy and the national debt or deficit. There is also a spiritual cost to war or warfare, and the wars are not quite over yet. There's something more to come, and all these are more signs of the times, the end times, transition days, which is a continuing day-by-day -day process of extraordinary changes happenings and events. It's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 7. Yes, the stork in the heaven knows her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. 8. How do you say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. 9. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them. Revelation chapter 16 verse 8 And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. 9. And humans were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom or nation was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. 11. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings or leaders of the east might be prepared. Everything is connected, and 
Everything is numbered. In other words, it's also called fate or destiny. The fourth angel comes quickly.